Today, I'm going to break down the key differences between on-page SEO and off-page SEO so you know how to use them together to improve your website rankings and traffic. Now, on-page SEO and off-page SEO are two very different things. Now, with on-page SEO, that involves updating and improving a website's content, the structure of the website, and elements on your website to help provide searchers and search engines the right information to fulfill their search query. So it's all about updating things on your actual website. So you have full control over things that you change and add to it. Now, when it comes to off-page SEO, that's totally different. So this involves building your site's reputation outside of your website through links and brand mentions, such as other blogs, press releases, newsletters, and social media. So this is all about building your authority on other websites aside from your own. And the goal is to have people link back to your website. Now the tactical strategies for these two are very different. Now let me touch on the on-page SEO strategies you can employ. One of the most important tactic for on-page SEO is to add your target keyword to various elements like your page title, the meta description, the URL, and also your headers. For example, with this website here, the target keyword for this blog article is best ultrasonic diffusers. So you see the target keyword in the heading. You also see it up here in the URL, best ultrasonic diffusers. And in the body copy, it's also mentioned here, best ultrasonic diffusers. And you can see variations like types of diffusers, and it goes into detail about the various types for the headings. Now, if you want to see all of these elements at a glance, I like to use a tool called SEO Minion. This is a browser add-on for Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. Now, if I click on the Chrome extension and click on Analyze on-page SEO, you could take a look at everything at a glance right here, like the URL, the title, the description, so on and so forth. So instead of manually scanning a page, you could basically just use this browser add-on to view things and find things in a quicker way. You also wanna add internal and external links. If you add internal links, to other relevant pages on your website. It helps search engines crawl other pages as well. And it also helps your readers go deeper into your website and learn more about the subject matter at hand. Also, relevant external links are needed as well because you wanna add a source to whatever article you might be referencing. And you also want to guide your readers to other areas on the web to help them learn more about their search query. You also wanna add descriptive and helpful image alt text. This helps search engines and the people who are visually impaired understand what the images on your page are about. And you could easily update the alt image text using any of the common SEO WordPress plugins. Now, another important on-page SEO strategy is to organize your site with silos. So that basically means interlinking closely related pages together. So you can envision it like this. You have your homepage, and then your homepage is linking to a category page. And from that category page, you can link to a subcategory page, which is a little bit more niche. And then from that subcategory page, you can link to a specific article. And there can be a multitude of other articles that the category pages are linking to as well, and they can all be interlinking with one another. Now, I'll include a link to a recent uh, video that we created about creating a silo structure, and I'll add that in the description below. You also want to add schema markup as well. This helps search engines understand the structured data of your page, so you can use an SEO plugin to create this schema markup, or you could use the schema markup generator. So here you can choose from a variety of schema markups. So an event, an FAQ page, how to, job postings, so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to off-page SEO strategies, there are many things you can focus on. The main one is of course to acquire backlinks. So you can reach out to authoritative websites for linking opportunities. One way to find authoritative websites is to start with your competitors' backlinks. 
Now, how do you find your competitor's backlinks? Well, I like to use Keywords Everywhere. This is also a browser add-on for Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. So when you search for your target keyword, and if you hover over this second row right here and click on Show Backlinks, you could view all of the backlinks to this page. So let's just say arthritissupplies.com is one of our competitors. We can take a look at this list to see where they are getting their backlinks. And we could find all of the relevant ones for our website and reach out to the authors there and see if we can acquire a backlink as well. So you can see the list of the URLs and also the anchor text along with the Moz domain authority. Now this one stands out to me from activebeat.com. The anchor text is arthritis gardening supplies. Now keep in mind the search term is ergonomic gardening tools for beginners. So this is a relevant uh, backlink with great anchor text, arthritis gardening supplies. Now if we open up that page, it's right here. So it says, did you know there are tools specifically designed for people with arth arthritis? Check out these arthritis gardening supplies. So if you click on it, this is a backlink pointing to this page. So this could be a great website for us to contact and see if we can collaborate on some content and hopefully acquire a backlink to our own website. You can also guest blog as well. So write articles for reputable blogs in your niche with links back to your site. Remember to write blogs that are tangentially related to your topic. You don't want to write something that's totally off of left field. It needs to be kind of relatively related. So for example, you can write a guest blog on maybe backyard remodeling. And in this guest blog, you can link to your own site with the anchor text of maybe vegetable gardening. So in your guest blog, you can talk about ways to remodel your backyard, and maybe one of the ways is to build out a vegetable garden, right? So they are both tangentially related. Another important strategy is social media. So you want to share your content and engage on social platforms to drive traffic and also build your brand mentions. So you want people to mention your brand name and also share any articles you have as well. Now, if you are a local business, I recommend registering your site on platforms like your Google business profile and Yelp. And another great off-page SEO strategy is to replace broken links on other websites with links to your content. Now, how do you find broken links? You could use SEO Minion. So for this page, let's see if there are any broken links. So I'm going to click on check broken links and give it a few moments. And let's see what types of links it finds. Okay, so it crawled all of the links and it color coded them. So we can see there is one 404 link. So that's a broken page and it's color coded yellow and it is right here on the page. There's also a link with a no domain. So if you take a look at this table right here, you can see it's this website that's no longer live. And then for the 404, it's this page right here. So if you have a relevant page that could replace this 404 link or the no domain link, then you can reach out to this website owner and see if they can replace all of these broken links with your link that actually works and is pointing to a valuable uh, piece of information. Now, in a nutshell, this is a comparison between on-page SEO versus off-page SEO. Okay, so the main focus for on-page is to optimize elements within your website versus off-page, which is all about creating brand mentions and links outside of your site pointing to yours. Now, in terms of how much control you have, so with on-page SEO, you have full control, right? Because you can change basically anything on your own website. But with off-page SEO, there is minimal control because you are working with other uh, website owners and it's not always guaranteed that they will link back to your site. And even if they do, after a while, they might update the page and maybe remove it in the future so you don't have full control. And the purpose for on-page is to offer content that is helpful and answers your searcher's query. And the purpose for off-page is to build links and brand mentions from other websites to build authority and credibility. Now, when it comes to results, the initial results appear after your page gets crawled whenever you update your page for any on-page SEO optimizations. 
So usually after one to two weeks, you could see results in terms of traffic and also your keyword rankings. While off-page SEO, it can take much longer to see results. It can take an average of three to six months to see your results. All right, now you should have a better understanding of on-page SEO versus off-page SEO and are better equipped to use both to not only drive more traffic to your site, but also rank higher in search engines. Now, if you enjoyed this video, uh, let us know by smashing that like button and also subscribing to our channel. And you can check out any of our other videos on the screen right now. Thank you.